it comes, it comes out. <laughs> so I'll start again. Last November, I was in Portsmouth Hospital for about four days. And it's a long story, but I'll try and keep it short. Uh, my son was due to go into hospital for a short operation. He was due to arrive at 7 o'clock in the morning and be let out about midday. And mum being mum, and because he lived on his own, I said I'd go down and be his carer for the 24 hours that was needed. Lord had other ideas. Driving down there, somebody decided that they wanted a lift in the boot of my car. It sounded worse than what it was, but never mind. I felt okay, so that driver and I went went on our way, but it wasn't until the middle of the night that I woke up and the room was spinning. Whether I was sitting, standing, laying, eyes shut, eyes open, the room would not stop. Well, it turned out that the ambulance came and I was in hospital and I never did look after my son. My, one of my granddaughters had to do it for me instead. But anyway, the doctor examined me and plumbed me with all sorts of different tests and ECGs and goodness knows what else. And they decided that the shunt I had received on the way to Portsmouth had upset the balance of my inner ear. And he said he was going to put me on anti-dizzy meds, which he did. He said, when they start working and you can open your eyes again, he said, you will still feel dizzy to a certain extent, but it will, it will die down eventually. He said, but when you start walking, choose an object in the distance and walk towards it. And that got me thinking. That's very much like our spiritual life, isn't it? Where are I as fixed? Because I was rushed in, I only went in in my nightwear and slippers and dressing gown, nothing else, no phone, no nothing. And I'm one of these people that have got my Bible on my phone. Didn't help anyway, because I couldn't open my eyes to do my daily readings. The light, if I opened my eyes, was horrendous. So I kept them shut until the medication started wearing in. And eventually I managed to open them and catch up on my Bible reading. And I was going through the Psalms at the time. And Psalm 141 says, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to anything evil, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth as one, when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. And this is the verse that spoke to me. But mine eyes are unto thee, O God, the Lord, in thee is my trust, leave not my soul destitute. And how true that is. Leave not my soul destitute. If we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because troubles do come, but we know that the Lord is working beside us. You know, when we read our Bibles, we can find lots and lots and lots of people where they are keeping their eyes on God. 
Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Samuel, Sarah, David. And that's just to name a few. And there are more in the New Testament. What about the woman with the issue of blood? She had enough faith just to touch the hem of his garment to be healed. The centurion, he had faith. He came to Jesus and Jesus was going to go to the centurion's house and he said, no, just say the word and my servant will be healed. And what about the four friends who lowered their colleague through the roof because they couldn't get through the door? Was that faith? I believe it was. And we could go on. And as I said, where are your eyes fixed? Where is your faith? Is it in Jesus? We can also read in Hebrews 12, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross and he is now seated at the right side of God's throne. It was his love for us that held him on that cross. And as we share in communion, let us take hold of that promise that he loves us. Let us thank him for all the pain and suffering he endured, so that we may walk in his example and share that love with those around us. You know, Paul said earlier, no, it wasn't Paul, it was the first song, as the deer pants after water, so our soul longs after you. Does our soul long after you? Because when we do, nothing can stand in the way of God's working in us.